The Red Sox offseason rolls on, as does the Locked On Red Sox podcast, as we continue our player reviews with two players who struggled mightily this year. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. I am your host, Nessens Lauren Willand, and as always, joined by my co-host, Massachusetts Pirates Team Insider, Worcester Red Sox PA, Jake Ignazuski, and we're going to continue our player reviews. We're going to be talking about Kike Hernandez and Bobby Dahlbeck, two players who did struggle to begin the season, and Bobby Dahlbeck's fate would have it. He ended up in Worcester, and Kike was dealing with a, a much more serious injury than we initially thought. So we'll start. We'll start with Kike. We'll start. We'll start on a, on a higher note. Um, you know, very disappointing start to the season. Especially, he was somebody coming in to this season that the Red Sox were kind of depending on. You know, he was a strong leadoff hitter. He obviously very good in center field. Could play second base too. That's why the Red Sox signed him last year. So to see him struggle without knowing why at the beginning of the season was like, what is going on with him? Like, what something just doesn't look right. And for me, I, I was concerned because I was like, it just doesn't make sense because he was so good last year. Why isn't this translating this year? It doesn't seem like anything has changed. Especially, as you mentioned, with, with his legendary playoff performance, something that you know was, was the biggest storyline when the Red Sox were in the playoffs last year. And then to see especially how he started off April, I believe he was down in the point zero like 50 batting average when you get below 100 you're you're, you're really struggling and and, you know there was a few games where we saw him have uh some good production at the plate uh so a a few two for five a two for five game in april and you know with how bad the offense was in april it was tough to not get a little bit of excitement out of the little things with the Red Sox offense that earlier in the season. Um, But yeah, as you mentioned, once we sort of figured out sort of what was up with him and um, his inability to really use his, you know, right side, his core with his legs due due to, you know, not only the hip flexor, but the the huge uh, bowling ball sort of blood sitting uh, in his muscle. Uh, And and who knows how long that that really had been sitting there. And so uh, I I think that especially, you know, with a full off season of recovery, um, I'm very excited to see how he's able to recover and come back. Yeah, me too, 100%. And, you know, when you get the the initial update, the, the hip flexor, the hip strain, you're like, oh, that, that sucks. Like hip injuries, no matter how minimal or how severe, they're very, very tricky. And it's all in the recovery. We've seen a lot of NHL players with hip problems, and it's just how are they going to bounce back? Because that's it's all in the legs when it comes to hockey. But when we saw – Kike, and he finally, when he said, no, I had a hematoma and it was, once it was drained, I felt instant relief. And it just answered so many questions for him because he was like, I can't put any weight on my right side. He told reporters that it, he wanted to be carried off the field because he just wanted to uh, curl up and cry because it was, he was in so much pain, which I, that's just, to me, I'm like, why are you playing through this? Like, this is clearly more than just a hip strain. And thankfully he did get it figured out and he was able to kind of return to form because for 51 games while he, before his injury, he was batting 209 after his injury and he returned 239. So Mm -hmm. clearly you could tell he was feeling better. And to have that kind of, if he has that full healthy off season, he hopefully we'll be able to do a lot of damage in 2023. And the Red Sox are going to need that. There's a lot of question marks surrounding this team. I really hope Kike Hernandez is not one of them. And, you know, another question mark too is, is he going to play center field or second base? Uh, I mean, most fans and most people would expect him to play center field, but he also has that ability to play at second base. And there's all, always the possibility of Xander Bogarts doesn't resign. He moved Trevor Story over to shortstop. But being able to have that versatility as well in the lineup is so key. But you need to be able to produce at the plate. If you're, if you're able to go all over the place, that's great. But if you're not able to be uh, a productive player in the lineup, it's going to weigh the lineup down, as we saw with Jackie Bradley Jr. A majority of the seven, eight, nine batters uh, 
of this th throughout the Red Sox season in their lineup really struggled. And, uh, you know, especially with Kike looking at the numbers compared to last year to this year, it's, it's really interesting because there's nothing incredibly blaring to what the real issue was. You know, as you mentioned with the batting average before his injury and after his injury, he was a lot more comfortable after his injury, but still struggled to get on base. And the interesting thing is, is that, you know, he only had a 1% decrease in strikeout percentage. So he, he was, he was, he had a lot better eye, but then in terms of walk percentage, 10.4% um, in 2021 and then 2022, 8.5%. And so he was walking less. And then when you look at the bad, of being able to get the ball in play, uh, he, he massively decreased from 2021 to 2022, 278 in 2021 and 257 in 2022. And uh, I, I think it was due to a lot of bad luck. He just wasn't able to get into the gaps maybe like he was able to uh, in 2021. And that could have been due to his backside being weak for the majority of the season. But I, I'm very curious to see maybe what adjustments he has. You know, he did mention earlier on in the season – he sort of changed his swing a little bit, especially with how much he was struggling in April. So that's another thing, too. If you're if you're constantly tweaking things and trying to change things and you're not able to fully get comfortable for a long period of time, you're going to struggle throughout the season. Yeah, and maybe it's just a matter of him going back to basics because before he, we knew of the injury and before we knew the extent of the injury, he was just trying to fix what he could in his swing and his mechanics. And sometimes that just makes things worse. And I am willing to chalk up Kike's season to, you know, obviously the injury, there's going to be some struggles there, but this whole, this offense as a whole was just so underwhelming. They underperformed and it was just a very weird season for the Red Sox. They were much better than how they played. They, it was just very disappointing on the offensive front and, and same with Kike Hernandez, you know, and yes, he, he did miss 60 games. He was injured. There was, you know, maybe not enough stability in his, in his routines, but I do think that you know the full off season. He has the the healthy off season. He can really figure out. Oh, do I need to really change my swing, or do I just need to go back to what I was doing? And when you mention the the positions, like where is he going to play next year? I think that it's also nice to have that reliability and right. that stability because we know he can play second. We know he can play the outfield, but. If you take him out of the outfield, then you just have a full an, another big hole to fill, and which is you know another reason why Xander Bogarts getting him on this team long term is very important because you lose him, you're going to lose more holes. So are you're going to have more holes to fill. So I think that you know I I'd love to see him in center field. He's so good out there, but we do know that he's amazing at second base. So it's it's great to have that problem, but I feel like if he is starting the season next year at second, it's stemming from a bigger problem now that the Red Sox are going to have. Right. And I, I feel like another component, a trait that Kike has in, that he brings so much to the team. And we saw so much in 2021 and not as much in 2022. And this definitely probably is to do with, um, you know, obviously how many, how, how long he was on the field in 2022 and also the tone of the overall season. We didn't really get to see too much of Kike's personality, I feel like, in 2022. You know, his, his funny faces, you know, the different things he would do on the bench, just, just the energy that he brought to the team and what made 2021 so special with the swagger and, and personality that that team played with. I, I don't know. I, I I feel like anytime I saw Kike Hernandez, at least on camera, um, whether it's in the game or whether it was like in front of reporters, he seemed uncomfortable and not really like he wanted to be there or, or he was having fun playing the game. I, maybe it had to do a little bit with, as I mentioned, the tone of the season, how he was playing on field, maybe the, the pain of the injury and his sadness of not being able to be, be able to contribute to this team that is in last place. But that's just something that I'm excited to have back once there's a fully healthy Kiki Hernandez where he is able to produce and we're able to get that energy back because that's another component that I feel like is why he's so special to this team. Yeah, I mean, he had a lot of energy. He's a big ball of energy and to see it kind of dwindle last year and I agree it, it, I'm sure it had to do a lot with this this team was not having fun last year and it's hard to be your optimistic self and be that kind of energy even though the team needs it it's still like we're losing we have no help we have no reliable pitchers our offense can't hit we're swinging at everything it's hard probably to get to get motivated to get excited when 
you know this team isn't performing and continuing to say, you know, oh, we just got to be better. You know, that's what we heard from Alex Cora all year. The players don't need to echo that as well. They know they need to be better. So I'm also excited to see that energy and to hopefully kind of get back to his old self. And going into our second segment of the Locked On Red Sox podcast, we're going to talk about somebody who I had way too high hopes for. I I would love I should go back to to bet online and see what his what Bobby Dalbeck's odds were for home runs and stuff to see maybe maybe bet online was very wrong too but I was the most wrong and we'll talk about Bobby Dalbeck in segment 2 as soon as Jake tells you about bet online. I'd be curious it had to have been like over 25 over 30 something like that but you know you can bet for Bobby Dalbeck in 2023 and lots of other players as well. But uh, Bet Online is your number one source for betting for football and the new basketball season. I don't know about you. I've been doing this every single Sunday, seeing which teams are the locks, over, under, lines, all that sort of stuff. And you can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news podcasts, and in depth analysis on every game. And as always, Bet Online continues. Uh, con- is your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-date scores with every sport out there. Head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. And do not forget to check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast from the games that matter that to the most the, the biggest stories in sports. It goes beyond the scoreboard. Go behind the scenes with our local experts and insights that only Locked On can provide. That's Locked On Sports available on Odyssey, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. So if you've been listening to this podcast for at least from this preseason or yep, preseason spring training, you know that I predicted very wrongly that Bobby Dalbeck would lead the Red Sox in home runs. It was very bold. I understand. I like doing bold takes, but this is also why I don't like doing preseason predictions because I'm just very, very bad at them. And it always just seems to go not my way. And it very much happened with Bobby Dalbeck. Just what a mess he was this season. He was so good in the second half of 2021 that blind optimism led me to my dumb prediction. But it wasn't even just the offense that he looked lost at the plate. He looked lost at first base. He was just almost a liability. And, you know, we saw the we saw the whole thing all year. Like, if Casas didn't get hurt when he did, he probably would have been up sooner. The second he was like, oh, he probably will play tonight, people were like, we'll get him in Boston. Like, this guy sucks. We need to get Bobby Dahlbeck out of the lineup. And then they bring in Eric Hosmer and then he ends up getting hurt. And then he's gone for a little bit while because his wife, Casey had their first child. So it was just a mess at first base, a revolving door and not even a revolving door, a steady locked door of like two people. And Hosmer was good while he was on first base. He did he was the immediate defensive upgrade that the Red Sox needed. But Bobby Dalbeck just always found himself at first base. And it was just painful to watch at times. And this, some of it, yes, he shouldn't have been on this team for as long as he was. He should have been in Worcester so much sooner, but there was no depth. There was nobody else to go to first base. So I was very disappointed. He was two, hitting 240 against lefties. He was bad against righties, hitting 204. And I don't know, like I, maybe I, I convinced myself in the first two months of the season that this guy is maybe a second half player. And it ended up, he ended up getting demoted to, to Worcester option to Worcester. And he did have good success there. And Chad Tracy, you know, really talked how amazing Bobby was handling being um, option to Worcester. Cause someone of his age and knows that, you know, he shouldn't be here. doesn't want to be here and he wants to be in the majors and he just handled it in stride, which I think speaks to the kind of person he is. It's just a shame that he just couldn't get it together this year because he could have been a very valuable piece to this to this lineup and maybe we wouldn't have had to go trade for a first baseman at the trade deadline there really is it really is crazy how much optimism there was going into this season and it makes sense with the, with the numbers 269 batting average 15 home runs in the second half uh, of last year and, and I, I believe he also won uh the the player of the year or the player of the month uh, for the Red Sox um, in August. And it, it's something where re- really looking at sort of Alex Cora's comments after he was sent down to Worcester, it was interesting to hear that, you know, he just has not stopped working. 
despite the Red Sox, you know, limiting his up at bats to only left-handed pitchers. And it, it really makes sense because the numbers are really staggering between uh, left-handed pitchers and right-handed pitchers, right-handed pitchers. He's batting 204 left-handed is 240. And I, I, I looked at last season too, because I was curious if anything changed left-handed last year. It was even more staggering 278 and then right-handed 212. And so he's just essentially blind when it comes to, you know, the, the ball coming from a right hand. And it's, it's just crazy also to see that his ability to have plate discipline and not swing at pitches outside of the zone, not only didn't change from 2021 to 2022, but even when I was down in Worcester, he was swinging at everything. Yeah. And it, it really just was crazy to me seeing all the comments on Twitter from his power surge right when he went down to Worcester and then just seeing it firsthand, how it was even worse than he, than when he was up in the majors and, you know, looking, looking at, you know, the Worcester numbers, they, they look amazing. Right. When you, right. When you see them just from surface level, 250 batting average, five home runs and eight RBIs over 48 up at bats, but he had back to back home run, two home run games. So he essentially hit four home runs in two games. And then the rest of those games, he either, you know, got a few hits here or there or just struck out every single time. And it's it's crazy to think that uh, he, he his play discipline doesn't get any better when the competition decreases so much from the majors to AAA. And I think it's just a perfect indication that Dalbeck is either a, a bench bat that can only bat against left-handed hitters for another team that is not the Red Sox, or he's a career AAA player. And it's it's so disappointing because I just feel like he's he's more than a AAA player. And I but I feel like he had enough chances to really get it together. And yes, this was not a good season for the Red Sox up and down this lineup. We know that. But we saw so many times last year, the Bobby Delbecks, the Kike Hernandez's, the, the players who weren't supposed to be like these big name heroes. They were contributing when in, in the big spots. They were contributing in the big moments. And no one could really do that this year. And this was a really good season for Bobby Delbeck to keep going from 2021 and really kind of translate the success he had at the end of 2021 into 2022. And some of the things he was swinging at, I'm like, and it just looked like lackadaisical swings. It just was not a happy time to to see Bobby Delbeck at at the plate. And he always looks so sad. He looks all the time, just looks so sad. And I'm like, he looks even sadder when he's not having a good time. And clearly was not with the Red Sox this season. And it is disappointing because he does work hard. And I think in, Alex Cora has said that too, that he doesn't stop working and he understands the situation he is in. But it's just, even though he, he's never, never stops working, it never, never started to translate. And you can work as hard as you can at your craft. Maybe it's a, a mental thing. Maybe now he's too, he was too much in his head and he knew he was too much in his head. And listen, the Red Sox fans, they booed Trevor Story. They will boo you the second that, and, and this really goes for any fan base, that they will boo their players the second that they are feeling like they're not getting the production they need to. And when, not so much for Bobby Dahlbeck, but like that's a Trevor Story thing, which we'll talk about in another episode. But when, you know, when you're getting paid all this money and you're, you should be contributing and you're not, I understand the disappointment. And it's really, I think my biggest thing with Dahlbeck is that this this was his job to lose. He yeah. had this was his first base and mm -hmm. and he lost it very quick, but it, he still kept it because there was just no one else to take over. There was between injuries and between people not I, I'm I would never want to see Christian Roy at first base again. That man nearly just ripped his groin clean off in his debut at first base. I never want to see that again. But it, there was just no depth. And then with Costas getting hurt, just it just really hindered everything. And I wonder if Dahlbeck was just like, I'm not good. I know that, but I'm not going anywhere because there's nobody to, to replace me. And then I was hoping once they traded for Eric Hosmer, that maybe it would be like a Kyle Schwarber situation where all of a sudden right. Bobby Dahlbeck is just hitting the cover off the ball because he knows he has that competition right there. And it didn't happen. So it, I, it wasn't for lack of effort. I just think that it's, hopefully a down season but I don't I think we saw enough last year where it's just like he's gonna do a lot a lot a lot 
to earn a spot back in this lineup. And it's going to be very, very difficult, especially if Hosmer sticks around. Obviously, Tristan Casas, I don't think he's going back to Worcester. Mm-hmm. It's it's going to be very hard for Bobby Dobbick to get back into this lineup. I, I couldn't agree more. And I, I think also I wouldn't be surprised if the pressure got a little bit to him uh, with Tristan Casas essentially breathing down his neck. Uh, for majority of this season. And, you know, w- when you also throw uh, Frenchy Cordero in the equation of, you know, just the platooning aspect of it, that's when you really saw uh, the confidence of the Red Sox really start to lack in Bobby Dalbeck's ability to be an everyday player. And I, I think it's also interesting, too, to-, to look at how his strikeout percent has decreased by 1% uh, from 2021 to 2022. That's that's a plus, but and and then his walk percentage also went up by two percent. That's that's a plus, but but the thing is, is his inability to hit the ball out of right. the ballpark, which is the, his biggest strength. And I, I, I've said this multiple times on this podcast. He is the greatest spring training player. He will lead the majors in spring training home runs every single year. But when you look at twenty twenty one, his ISO, which I just learned what this was today. I'm, I'm trying to get on my Tyler Milliken uh, d- d- uh, track and, and look at these inside numbers. Uh, but slugging percentage minus a batting average in 2021, 254, 2022, 155. That's staggering. But that's by a whole 100. And especially with those numbers, I don't know that too much, but that, that has to be a lot. And you have to be able to try really hard to not be able to hit home runs when it's essentially your major strength. Yeah, and I mean, we, we, we've we seen that power. We've seen those home runs. We know it's there. It just, nothing was working for Bobby Delbeck. And we have a few listeners who actually agree with us. Well, I, I say actually, like we, like, like they had good seasons or like this was some sort of hot take we're spewing on here on Locked on Red Sox. But Mike, uh, well, let's start with Jake put on the Locked on Red Sox Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox. Asking, you know, people what they thought of Dalbex and Hernandez this season. And we had Mike, who said Hernandez was disappointing, but ruined by injuries. And Dalbeck was a massive, in all caps, disappointment. Because it seemed in the second half of 21, he was figuring it out. And then he went backwards. That's pretty much what we just said for the last 10 minutes. Was that, yes, it was a major disappointment. Because we, we saw the potential. We saw it all there in the second half of 2021. And it just left like it was such a dramatic downfall. There wasn't even this little, I don't know, like decline. There was no little decline. It was just it was this cliff that Max Kellerman thought Tom Brady was going to fall off of five years ago. That like This was the cliff. Bobby Dalbeck just went right off of it. And I do hope he bounces back. But again, where does he fit on this lineup? I don't know. But I think Mike, you know, just really hit it on the head with what we just talked about. I, I agree, and uh, I, I I would not be surprised if he's not on this roster, whether it's the major league roster or the forty man roster um, at the beginning of twenty twenty three. And um, what I've noticed, at least a, a few patterns, Michael Chavis drafted by Ben Charrington went right to the Pittsburgh Pirates. I could see Bobby Delbeck going to the Philadelphia Phillies, who's drafted in the fourth round in twenty sixteen by Dave Dombrowski, and. Who knows? Maybe he feels like he saw something in 2016 that maybe he could fix. Maybe he'll pluck him from the Red Sox and the Sox can find a way. Heim Bloom can find a diamond in the rough to be able to throw it in Dave's face because he's getting all the fame right now. He's everybody. I actually had somebody ask me on, on a podcast I went on. He, he said, do you think Heim Bloom, there should be a comparison between Dave and Heim after you know this time period because Dave's in the World Series and Heim isn't? And I'm like... No, I don't. They've yeah, got two, a lot two of those very players. different Come people. On. These, are, these, these are very different situations. But going back to Bobby Delbeck, um, you know, I, I think it's so drastic that Heimblum doesn't have any more um, not stock in him. And he's also not the one who drafted him either. And I think especially with the, the production that we saw from Cassis at first base, I, I think it's his job now. And, uh, you know, what, what eventually – ended up happening, which a lot of people sort of intended to happen or or believed was going to happen is that Dalbeck was going to lose a position. But my, my big question now is where where does, where does he play? He he was a third baseman and first baseman coming up, tried him in the outfield. I I don't think they ever tried that like in the majors, but they were talking about it at least in training. Same with second (laughs) base too. 
But like, where does he play? Because his his defense was awful at first base. So I, I'm curious to see if he does get traded if they move positions or. Yeah, I mean, this is this goes back to you know, us continuing to say that the Red Sox have a busy off season in front of them. For it, and it's not just the Bogarts and the Devers. It's the, the Dahlbecks. It's the smaller players because now it's like the smaller players, you know. But the where where do they fit? And was there going to be some kind of log jam? Are you going to be able to get a, a good return for Dahlbeck? Is there going to be a team out there like the Phillies, like the Pirates even, who maybe see something in him and they're like, maybe this kid just needs a fresh start, even though he wasn't that bad just one year ago. So maybe it's a risk worth taking when, you know, a year ago he was really, really good. You know, he's not that far removed from a, a good second half of the season. Maybe there is something there but that is a, a big storyline to watch in this off season this, this is such a michael shavis situation <laughs> I, I it's so identical it really is it's crazy because remember how good shavis was in his rookie year and then out of nowhere he, he really showed his colors that he was a strikeout guy in power only it's with Dalbeck too i don't know i just feel like it's so similar <laughs> I I did not have high hopes for for Chavis unfortunately and I was <laughs> I wanted to. I really wanted to cuz I liked the guy. He was he was funny. He was really like he just loved being around baseball and you could just feel his the purity that he loved baseball. And so I was I was bummed it didn't work out but I'm like I don't know I just never had these high hopes for him. So that was very very unfortunate. I had higher hopes for Delbeck and it just, this is why like again this is why I don't make predictions because it, it always <laughs> ends bad for the player that I'm talking about. Um, Joseph pretty much has the same feelings about Dahlbeck. He said that Bobby Dahlbeck had straight up pitiful at bats, felt completely useless, although his defense was ser serviceable. And he says in parentheses, I guess at third or even short, but he should never be in those situations to begin with. Yes. Injuries tanked Kike season. And I think he'll bounce back great defense in center field. Um, yeah, 100%. I do think that, you know, what he said that Bobby Dalbeck should have never been in those situations. Yes. 100%. You can't do anything about injuries. We know that. So those are out of everyone's control. But again, this goes back to not having the depth, the proper depth. And why are we putting these players? Like, why are we doing trial and error at the major league level? Like, this is not what we should be doing, especially, you know, we saw how bad Christian Arroyo was in the outfield at times. It was it was awful. Like he, there were memes and gifts made of him because he couldn't find the ball and he panicked. And yes, I, I wouldn't, I'd be panicking too if I lost the ball in the lights, but like, that's another thing. He should have never been in those situations. They were setting him up to fail, not intentionally, but they, because they didn't have a choice. So he's in these positions that he's never played or that he's played very minimal at. And he's just kind of like a deer in headlights. He's like, what the hell do I do? I, and he already knows that he's not good at first base. He already knows he's struggling. That's not going to help him in any way, shape, or form. I mean, you bring up memes. Uh, when, when Bobby <laughs> yeah. Dalbeck was slayed oh, at, God. at shortstop in the starting lineup, like that, that's what people were making memes out of that. Like we talked about how Chris Sale get injuring his pinky was, was, you know, the real dagger of the season. I feel like when uh, you see Bobby Dalbeck at shortstop <laughs> and Christian Vasquez at first base in the, in the same lineup. That's that's when you know that the, the season's pretty much down the drain. There's no trying at that point. And you're right. He shouldn't have been put in those situations. And that definitely didn't help with his offensive approach, having to mentally focus on how, how to try and figure out how, how to uh, play a position that you're not used to at all. And then and then go up and try and figure out major league pitching when you basically haven't been able to for, you know, three three halves of, of your major league career in one half of the season, you looked like an absolute all-star was hitting better than Mike Trout. It just doesn't really add up whatsoever. And uh, I, I, I'm i sticking with the Bobby Delback going to the Phillies, and that's the only way that his, his career is able to revive itself. Because you think about Kyle Schwarber. I think Schwarber was really the key to Bobby Dalbeck's final puzzle piece of figuring out how to be a disciplined hitter at the major league level. Once Schwarber came, whether it was that pressure from the trade deadline of them potentially getting Rizzo and then getting Schwarber to eventually try and, you know, replace Dalbeck at first base, or if Schwarber showed him how to have play discipline because he's, be he's better at causing calling balls and strikes than most umpires are, especially Angel Hernandez. But, I think that's the key to it. You know, if Schwarber and Dalbeck are able to reconvene in Philadelphia, maybe he's able to figure something out. I don't know. 
And it also makes me think too, is this like an Andrew Benintendi situation where he tried to change his swing? He tried to do too much because he bulked up and he's like, I need to hit for power. I need to hit home runs. That's all, that's what I need to do. Is this kind of a situation like that where it's like, no, you don't need to just continue to hit home runs, like hit, put the ball in play. That was a huge thing for the Red Sox this year. They could not put the ball in play. They could not score with runners in scoring position. It was just pitiful. Like like Joseph said, just pitiful at bats for the Bobby Dahlbeck and for the offense as a whole. So I wonder if that's some of it too. That's a big boy. That is a very big athlete. And maybe he needs to, I don't know, maybe he needs to cut. Maybe he needs to maybe shed, shed some weight, bulk, bulk up. I don't think he needs to bulk up anymore, but Maybe there's something there in that swing where he's just trying too much and hopefully he uses off season to fix that and get back to himself and then maybe build a nice trade stock. Get that trade stock up. We need the, you know, inflation. Let's get, let's get Bobby Dalbeck stock up too. Let's, let's get him like, and I feel like he could be serviceable to a team, whether that's the Phillies or whether that's one of the other 30, 31 teams Well, 30, if we're counting that with the Red Sox and the Phillies, but it's, Again, this is a big offseason for the Red Sox for so many reasons because you got a lot of pieces here and you don't really know where they fit. I, I see them probably packaging them up. If you try to do a one for one, you're going to get a Michael Chavis, Austin Davis sort of trade. And, you know, the, the Sox don't need any more of those. Uh, they, they need players that are going to be a part of a championship team. That That's how Heimblum needs to start uh, planning. He needs to. He needs to keep the promise that he gave Kiki Hernandez, the, the guy that we talked about in the first segment. The team is going to be better. So make the team better and, uh, you know, start to get some of these players off the team who, who really don't have a future. And uh, you're, you're just going to um, keep on putting them up on a shelf and, and having their trade value continue to decrease and decrease. And uh, Bobby Dalbeck just needs consistent up at bats, I feel like. And that's one of the biggest reasons why they put him down in Worcester. But if he's able to go on a team, you know, um, like, like the Pirates, like the Reds, you know, I brought up the Phillies mainly just through the Dave Dombrowski and Schwarber connection. But if he's able to get consistent up at bats on a rebuilding team where maybe he's able to figure some things out and he's not so, uh, I, I guess, limited to only facing left handed pitchers, um, then he's going to be able to serviceable major league player but if he's not then you know I, I see him you know hopping around a little bit and then just being a triple a player for the rest of his career but i, I don't want that to happen because yeah. he's, he's 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 tried his best to play in a tough market he was put in a tough situation you know anytime i hear him speak on interviews he's like i understand the market i understand the pressure i understand uh, the threshold that i need to get to but um there's only so much that you can do when maybe the talent isn't there like he has the power but like he just needs to figure out the strike zone, I guess. Yeah. Like you, you just need to stand in a batting cage, try, I guess, every day during this offseason or, I guess, have some vacation, but but be, you know what I mean? Yeah. Work, work on understanding the strike zone. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, and, you know, I, I truly do hope he figures this out because, like you said, every time he spoke to the media, he handled this well. You know, he did, he really, really did. And I have to give him that because it's, we've seen a, some players this season not handle things very well. And he's handled everything like a champ. Him, him and Jaron Duran are like the same age. Yes, which says a lot about Jaron Duran because please, I can't wait for his review episode. Anyway, Bobby Delbeck, we, we want the best for him, but there's not a lot of room for him on this team. But if he can really have a good, good off season, a really strong spring training, maybe there is something there that a team will be like, we need this guy. Let's figure out a trade. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. Rate, review, and subscribe to Locked On Red Sox here on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts is where you can find us. And you can find us on Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox, Jake at Jake Iggy, and me, La 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 Lauren, three laws, Lauren with four R's. And now that you have made Locked On Red Sox your first listen, Head on over to Locked On Sports today from the games that matter to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with our local experts and insights that only Locked On can provide. That's Locked On Sports today, available on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, the Odyssey app, wherever you get your podcast. Be sure to check out Locked On Phillies and Locked On Astros too. They must be having a grand old time. Must be nice to be, have a team in the World Series. Go check them out. They're putting in a lot of work. They're having a lot of fun. I know some of the guys from Locked On Astros have been going to the games. So 
check out their content. It's a lot of fun. And maybe that will be locked on Red Sox in 2023. But until then, we'll see you soon. We're going to continue doing these player reviews and bring you all the news and updates throughout the offseason. Maybe a Bobby Dalbeck trade. Who knows? Winter meetings are around the corner, kind of a month-ish away. So a lot to look forward to. But until then, we're going to end the show how we always do. Let's go Red